You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Nick Wilson and meteorologist Ethan Foreman. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It's 645 on this Monday morning. I'm Nick Wilson. And I'm Ethan Foreman. And are we in for a calm Monday today? We sure are. Today is going to be probably one of the calmer days this week. Tomorrow looking pretty decent too, but a nice sunrise looking out on our KCAU 9 studio camera sp sponsored by the Nelson Commercial Construction. Those temperatures sitting generally in the 30s across the area, but 41 right now in Mapleton, currently at 32 in Lamar's and Denison, 36 here in Sioux City and just 30 in Sheldon, Iowa at this time. And those temperatures gonna be climbing into the low to maybe mid 60s across the area today. This model might be about two degrees underdone for today's forecast as we'll see plenty of sunshine and clear conditions, but we do have some changes on the way. Your details are coming up in your full forecast in about five minutes. All right, thanks Ethan. Well, a man accused of killing an Iowa police officer has pleaded not guilty. Kyle Rick is charged with first degree murder. Rick waived his right to an arraignment and instead entered a written plea for not guilty. Police say Rick shot Algona police officer Kevin Cram last month as Cram attempted to arrest him on an outstanding warrant. Rick is scheduled to be in court on November 14th for a pretrial conference. A jury trial is set to begin December 12th. And meanwhile, Yankton authorities investigated an assault that took place yesterday. According to the city of Yankton, officers and EMS received a call around 1.15 in the morning regarding an injured male. The victim was transported to a local hospital with life-threatening injuries, and his condition is unknown at this time. Upon investigation, authorities determined the victim was assaulted and a suspect was identified. 23-year-old Caleb List of Yankton was arrested for aggravated assault. And in other news, the Iowa Department of Education says the average in-state community college tuition is up by 3.6% in fiscal year 2024. Northwest Iowa Community College in Sheldon has the highest combined tuition and fees totaling $230 per credit hour or a 3.6% increase between fiscal year 2023 and 24. Iowa Lakes Community College with campuses in Esterville and Emmitsburg reports a 2.7% rise, while Western Iowa Tech in Sioux City had a 2.5% jump. The average out-of-state tuition and fees in the state went up by 3.3% over the last year. And meanwhile, a local fire department opened its doors to the public for a sneak peek at their operations. The North Sioux City Fire Department held its annual open house over the weekend. People toured the station and climbed aboard different fire trucks and vehicles. The North Sioux Fire Chief told us these events are a great way to promote the station and garner possible volunteers in the future. I mean, it's hard to find help anywhere and to find volunteer help is even harder. But uh, we've got a good group of people, they're very involved, and we have a good community that supports us, so we're always looking for more help. And free food was available at the open house. Meanwhile, Siouxlanders also got the chance to bless their pets at a local church. Representatives from local Presbyterian churches blessed animals at Shepherd's Garden. About a dozen dogs and cats were joined by their families in the service. We spoke with one of the organizers about why blessing your pet is important. We are all part of God's creation, that the animals were part of God's creating uh, this whole process as well, uh, along with people, and we live together, we share this space together. Um, we adopt these pets to be our own parts of, of our own families. Uh, they become so very close to us that why would we not bless them as we bless our children? The pets had to be leashed, caged, or secured. The church also accepted donations for Noah's Hope Animal Rescue. And now it's time to meet today's stray of the day. Every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue who's waiting to go home. That's right, this is Nibbles, an over eight year old neutered male domestic short hair brown tabby cat. He was found on the 3100 block of Nebraska Street. He does have a microchip, however, the owner's information has not been updated. So if you know, please let, if you know Nibbles, please let his owners know that he's at Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue. 
If you've lost your pet, looking to adopt, or you'd like to sponsor a pet for adoption, you can visit the rescue's website at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. Nibbles is an awfully cute cat. Yeah, and I think they'll like the weather over the next few days, but probably not to end the week. That's for sure. Our stormcast shows that we're going to be seeing those clear conditions for today and tomorrow as well. And fast forwarding through our stormcast, really not much going on. But you can see in Canada, they're dealing with some snow and some of them could see some quite heavy snow with uh, some areas getting over a foot of snow in that region so not a good thanksgiving day for them out there as it is canada's thanksgiving day today but going to be seeing some showers move in as we head into tuesday night and wednesday affecting our southern areas we get a little bit of a break and then more precip really starts to fire up as we get into thursday thursday looking like a very wet day with very little break in the rain it looks like according to this model run we still hang on to that rain for much of friday before starting to taper off into friday night and saturday morning could even see a few snowflakes well off to the west but most of us are probably going to be too warm for snow we have a marginal risk for our southern areas for wednesday we'll be keeping an eye on this as time gets closer but for today 63 degrees sunny and pleasant much cooler than we saw yesterday 32 degrees for that low tonight mostly clear with some more frost on the way then we start to warm up for Tuesday and Wednesday before really crashing into Thursday and Friday Friday looking like a wet cold and windy day with highs only in the upper 40s slowly warming up into next week thanks Ethan now we turn to sports where the Iowa Hawkeyes football team was busy over the weekend Noah Sacco has the highlights in your morning sports wrap Good morning, Sioux Land. It wasn't pretty, but Iowa stays in the win column over Purdue 20 to 14 from Saturday, earning backup quarterback Deacon Hale his first win in his first game as starter after former QB1 Cade McNamara suffered a season ending torn ACL last week. Not the greatest outing for Hill, though. Six of 21 for 110 yards and one touchdown in the one score win. And it was the defense coming through yet again, especially on the line, sacking Boilermaker quarterback Hudson Card six times during the afternoon. Afternoon. OABCI G alum Cooper DeGene and Jay Higgins each recorded an interception, and it's been a theme for a long time under Kirk Ferentz. Defense winning games and dominating up front. Still, Kirk has confidence in Hill under center. Looking forward to how he handles that role. I thought he you know, kept his composure, and a couple of them we didn't help him on again. We're, you know, catch, you know, got to make the makeable plays, and we didn't always do a great job of that. But, you know, he hung in there, kept doing a good job, and proud, proud of our guys in all phases. Certainly a lot to clean up, a lot to play for. And I uh, just told him to enjoy the win. Hopefully we grew a little bit today, and uh, we still have plenty of room for improvement. With regular season and playoff action in multiple sports in multiple states, there was a buffet of top moments as Sioux Lane filled its plate. Time for those Sports Zone Top 5 Plays of the Week. And anyone else feeling like it's too early to be this cold on Fridays? Well, maybe it's just me. Anyways, at number 5, Western Iowa Tech men's soccer in Gillette College. Soft cross inside to Angel Diaz, and he has his head in the game. Literally, beauty of a header for their fifth goal of the day. Nylon by way of Noggin. Four, one of four players to score in this one. Comics cruise to the 5-0 shutout at home. Number four, high school volleyball. Elk Point Jefferson and Viborg Hurley. Huskies bring in the hustle last Tuesday. Hannah Nehrman sprinted back and somehow keeps this one alive. Wow. Caitlin Van Rokel gets it over to continue the rally. And you know they're going to finish it off. Courtney Brewer wins them the point. Stellar stuff. EPJ sweeps three zip. Number three, Vermilion and T area in the Class A state semis. Titans trying to break a 1-1 tie on the PK. Here's Johnny. Johnny Fleming with a big time save on a big time stage all kinds of fired up tanager's magic though runs out and their season and title run ends in the semis 2-1 number two gpac football briarcliff and don't check this out matthew mason on the carry hitting the moves and then the circle button putting the tigers in the spin cycle that's going to move the change too smooth chargers coming back to win at 18 16 they are 2-0 at home and a number one cedar catholic hosting battle create braves kicking it off to open the second half Look at this. Brighton Whitmere right into the scrum and the legs never stop churning. Somehow breaks free. Now he's breaking off in open space. Nothing but pay dirt. 81 yard kick return touchdown. Getting Cedar Catholic on the board, but it's the Braves delivering the bigger blows from Friday night. They take down the Trojans 30 to 12, the final. 
That's your check at sports. You stay classy, Siouxland. Now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. The Omaha Nation law enforcement announced changes after several officers walked out last week. The Omaha Tribe of Nebraska said in a Facebook post Friday that the Tribal Council has retained all of their tribal law enforcement personnel. This comes after some members quit on Thursday due to the council denying their request to have an administrative official removed from their position. The council also swore in a new police chief. The tribe says they have an ongoing law enforcement program and have 24-hour coverage to ensure public safety. And meanwhile, Pearl Street in Sioux City will be closed between 4th and 5th Streets starting tomorrow. The City of Sioux City Engineering Division says a private contractor will use cranes that will occupy the closed section. The Engineering Division says the road is expected to reopen later in the day tomorrow. And finally, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley was in Sioux City last night. Haley visited Morningside University as part of her ongoing tour through the Hawkeye State. Haley talked about issues like ethanol and the ongoing conflicts in Israel and Ukraine. One theme she emphasized was the safety of Americans. We need to start focusing on what it's going to take to protect Americans and on our national security. We're going to have foreign threats for the next 10, 15 years. We've got to be ready for that. That's what I'm ready to do. This is not the time for us to be distracted. This is not the time for us to be divided. We need to come together for the good of ourselves and our allies and make sure that we get a strong America again. Haley will stop in Ida Grove and Boone later today. And now one last look at the forecast. You know, we've been blessed with some pretty warm temperatures earlier in the month and for sure September too. How are things looking the rest of today? Well, today and tomorrow are looking great, but we're going to be watching the end of the week closely as we have some rainfall that's going to be affecting us. In fact, Wednesday, parts of our area already under a marginal risk uh, for severe weather with large hail and damaging wind gusts being a possibility. Still a few days out, so things could very well change, but this stretches from just south of Neely toward Norfolk, West Point, and Tacoma, and also down in Omaha. So we'll be watching this carefully over the next few days as changes could very well arise. But for today's forecast, we're gonna be seeing sunny and pl pleasant conditions with a high of 63 degrees. This is just a few degrees below where we should be for this time of October, but definitely cooler for your Monday and pleasant day coming for your Columbus day. But it could be worse. Parts of Canada right now are seeing some heavy snow and it's their Thanksgiving day, believe it or not. So definitely good news that we don't have that here in Siouxland, but 32 degrees for tonight, mostly clear with that patchy frost. Going to be another cold night on the way, so we'll be keeping an eye on those frost chances once again. But you're look, looking at your 9 on 9 forecast now. We'll see those highs climb into the upper 60s for Tuesday and Wednesday with some more clouds to end the day on Wednesday. Even some showers starting to move in. Could see some showers Tuesday night as well to our south, but we'll be keeping an eye on that, and then we'll see those tem temperatures really start to fall into Thursday and Friday. Only 49 degrees for that high for Friday the 13th. Definitely going to be very cold and wet on that day. Definitely not going to be good luck that day, that's for sure. Then we'll see those highs finally climb back into the mid to upper 50s to end the weekend and start next week. Even 60 degrees next Tuesday with plenty of sunshine. So going to be keeping an eye on that, Nick. Enjoy the sunshine while it lasts and enjoy those 60s too. We won't have them forever. Yeah, no, we won't. Well, thanks for watching. KCAU 9 News returns at 1130.